This video provides an introduction to GRADE, a commonly used approach for guideline development. The learning objectives of the video are to understand the basic concept of GRADE, to become familiar with the terms certainty of evidence and strength of recommendation, and to learn about the use of summary of findings tables and evidence to decision tables. Barbara nussbaum Streit from Cochrane, Austria, at Danube University Krems, explains why GRADE has become a commonly used approach for guideline development. Developing guidelines is quite complex. Different organizations use different methods, and the guideline development process often remains unclear. This makes it difficult for users of guidelines to judge the appropriateness and trustworthiness of recommendations. In the year 2000, the GRADE Working Group was established to address these shortcomings. They tried to facilitate a more transparent and more systematic guideline development process and experts from all over the world contributed to the GRADE approach. Um, nowadays it is widely used and more than 70 organizations, including the World Health Organization, use it. The two most important things about GRADE are transparency and its systematic approach. Because when you develop a guideline, many decisions need to be made and many factors need to be considered. Besides the evidence on the effectiveness and safety of an intervention, also additional factors like preferences and values of patients, costs or feasibility need to be taken into account. And the GRADE approach provides a framework that systematically guides the groups through this process and makes sure that all important factors are discussed and considered. And in addition, it encourages the groups to also explain and document all their decisions. And this makes everything transparent. Certainty of evidence, also called quality of evidence, is an important concept within GRADE. As we all know, studies can have serious limitations. Sometimes we have little confidence that the results of a study actually come close to the truth, or that future well-conducted studies would not show entirely different findings. The term certainty of evidence characterizes the confidence that researchers have in the results and effect estimates of studies. Within the context of guideline development, GRADE defines the certainty of evidence as the extent of our confidence that the estimates are adequate to support a particular decision or recommendation. GRADE uses four classifications to characterize the certainty of evidence. High, moderate, low, and very low. High means that we are very confident that the true effect lies close to the effect that we see in the studies. It also means that it is very unlikely that future studies will change the estimate of effect. At the other end of the spectrum is very low which means that we have very little confidence in the effect estimate. Future studies are very likely to substantially change this effect. So, how do we get these grades of certainty of evidence? First, we look at the factors that potentially lower our confidence in studies. Grade defines five factors that can lower the confidence in the evidence. Risk of bias. How much confidence do we have in the methodological validity of the studies? Inconsistency. Do studies show the same direction of effect? What about the same magnitude of effect? Indirectness. Are studies applicable to our population of interest? Do they use the interventions, comparators, and outcomes that we are interested in? Imprecision. Are the confidence intervals wide, or are the studies underpowered? Publication bias. Are we missing any studies or outcomes because they were never published? On the other hand, there are three factors that can increase the confidence of the evidence. These factors are mostly relevant for non-randomized studies, but are sometimes also relevant for randomized control trials. Is there a dose-response relationship? Is the size of the effect large or very large? 
and would all plausible confounding that might occur in observational studies actually reduce the effect that we see? Based on these factors, investigators upgrade or downgrade the certainty of the evidence. Randomized control trials always start out at high certainty of evidence and can be downgraded if necessary. Observational studies always start at low certainty of evidence and can be up or downgraded. What distinguishes GRADE from other systems is that the certainty of evidence needs to be rated for each outcome that is important or critical for decision making because the certainty of evidence can vary substantially across outcomes. This means that selecting the right outcomes is a crucial task when using GRADE. Because every intervention can have benefits and harms, guideline developers need to take desirable outcomes and undesirable outcomes into consideration. But not all outcomes are equally important for decision making. GRADE recommends to rank the importance of outcomes by using a scale from 1 to 9. A rating of 1 to 3 reflects outcomes of limited importance. A rating of 4 to 6 reflects important outcomes. And outcomes rated as 7 to 9 are critical for decision making. Members of the guideline panel, and also patients ideally, can rank outcomes. GRADE recommends using the seven highest ranked outcomes for making recommendations. It is also important to remember that the relative importance of outcomes might vary for subpopulations. To summarize the evidence and the certainty of evidence, GRADE uses summary of findings tables. These tables provide guideline panels with key findings. They present results in relative and absolute measures, and they incorporate the certainty of evidence for important or critical outcomes. How does GRADE move from the evidence to recommendations? The GRADE concept emphasizes that guideline panels need to take more into consideration than numbers and facts from research studies. Equally important are the balance between benefits and harms, differences of benefits and harms in subpopulations, preferences and values of patients, issues of equity and acceptability, and sometimes costs and other factors. To enable guideline developers to take all of these criteria into consideration in a standardized manner, GRADE recommends evidence to decision tables. The purpose of evidence to decision tables is to help people use the evidence in a structured and transparent way to inform recommendations. They inform judgments about the pros and cons of each intervention that is considered, ensure that important factors that determine a decision are considered, provide a concise summary of the best available research evidence to inform judgments about each criterion, and make the basis for decisions transparent to guideline users or those affected by a policy decision. The final step of a guideline panel is to make recommendations. GRADE recommends two types of recommendations, strong or weak recommendations, for or against an intervention. What does strength of recommendation mean? The strength of a recommendation reflects the confidence that guideline panels have that the desirable effects of a management strategy outweigh the undesirable effects. A strong recommendation means that benefits clearly outweigh harms. A weak recommendation means that there is some uncertainty about the balance of benefits and harms and that some patients might choose not to have an intervention.